What's going on guys? So uh, today we're talking about antique knives with real gold and silver in them. So this video has a couple different things going on at once. Um, these are just basically some older knives. Uh, a couple of them are antique, a couple of them are just vintage. Um, I think honestly, I mean, all these knives are super cool, but these two are the coolest by far, including this one kind of. <laughs> we want to talk about those. Um, these are still awesome, these are still awesome, and this is certainly awesome, the, the pipe tool, but there's a, a bunch of different things to break down here. The general theme of the video is older knives that have genuine silver and genuine gold in them. Uh, it's not something that's super common today, obviously silver and gold is uh, expensive, and although silver is definitely affordable enough where we can have silver integrated into our, our knives, not a lot of companies do it. It's just one of those things. I don't know why there's not a modern company making a $200 knife that has a solid silver handle. I don't know. I think that'd be cool. I'd definitely buy one uh, and probably carry it. It'd be my preferred knife, I'm sure. But uh, anyway, um, starting with uh, this tool here. And by the way, uh, uh, some of these I got from that uh, trade I did with the uh, wonderful gentleman up in Canada. And I said I was going to do a video later on some of these older knives. And that's why I'm making this video now. But I've included a couple knives I already had as well. So first off, we're going to talk about this pipe tool. This is a super cool pipe tool here. All right. Let me uh, zoom in for you on it. Let me show you the, uh, the back here. It says Dawes and Ball, made in England. All right. So we basically have three different tools in here. We have a pipe scraper, which is clearly marked pipe scraper. It's nice they did that. We have our pen blade here, which you can use for anything, you know, cutting a wrapper, cutting a, a packaging open, whatnot. And then we have our poker. Our poker is to aerate uh, the tobacco and move things around inside your pipe. And of course, on the bottom here is our tamper. All right, tamper is what you're going to use to pack down your tobacco when you're smoking. All housed in a nice little um, handle here. All right, it does have a bail on it, which is very nice. So you can attach a keychain or something to it. Now, doing a little bit more research on this particular pipe tool, um, this one would have been made between uh, 1932 and 1965. That's the era for this exact style. Um, and they're not, you know, terribly difficult to find, although, you know, it's not super common. But uh, the actual company themselves have been around since 1875. So very uh, rich in history. So a super cool pipe tool, which is completely functional. Now, now that's kind of out of the way because I didn't want to mention that even though it has no silver or gold content at all. Um, these knives here have silver content and this knife here has gold content. I have these two knives here as well because these could be easily mistaken with something that may have been made out of gold. Now first I want to talk about this particular knife which has real gold in it, although a minuscule amount which we'll talk about in just a moment here. Uh, but this is an antique fruit knife, okay? And this has a pretty interesting chain, all right? So this would be carried very similar to like a pocket watch or something. Um, but uh, a fruit knife was used for just, as you would imagine, cutting fruit, all right? Fruit knives um, started as, as old as 1700, but they were very popular uh, towards the end of the um, Georgian era and extremely popular. They're, they're most uh, used during the Victorian era. All right, super, super common, super, super popular. Um, these two here are great examples of, you know, those fruit knives, but we'll talk about that in just a moment. But first I'm focusing on the gold aspect of things. So you can see we have a little pen blade on one side. All right, then we have an interesting tool on the other side. All right, now this tool was called a, uh, a seed pick, all right? And so when you're eating different types of fruit, you would use this particular tool uh, to pick literally the seeds out of your fruit. It could be as simple as scoring around a peach pit and popping out a peach pit. Uh, it could have been, you know, pulling out little, uh, you know, seeds inside of grapes or something. I mean, anything, any kind of fruit. This was literally to remove those pits. There's some uh, jimping all up and down the inside curvature of this tool. So you can use this, you know, on your thumb to get in there and just kind of pry and poke around your fruit to eat it. Um, now, if I come in really close on the bale here, you see some of the markings. The chain, unfortunately, does not have any kind of gold in it at all, but you can see the markings on this bale. If I get this to focus. All right, you can see those there. 
it says 1 slash 20 dash 12k. So that's 1 20th of 12 karat gold filled. Now, first off, it's not the handles themselves because these are actually scales. Let me come back in. They're scales that are gold filled that are over an actual frame. Might be hard to see that, maybe towards the edges here. So basically, you have probably a stainless steel frame. Um, the actual blade is marked stainless on this one. But the, the very thin gold scales on top are what actually is gold filled. Now, if they were solid 24 karat gold, it still wouldn't be that much money, but they're not. All right, so let me explain exactly how little gold is truly in these knife scales. All right, just to give you some basic math, but first off, you know, a lot of people understand or know or have heard 24 karat gold. That's solid gold, right? 24 carats, it's 100% gold. 12 carats is half of that. 12 carats is 50% solid gold. So like, let's say you had a 12 carat solid gold ring, you'd weigh that and you'd cut that number in half. That would be your gold, your gold weight, right? In 24 carat anyway, to make it easier to figure out what that value is. So let's just say for, you know, this particular purpose that an ounce of gold is $1,900, which is close to what it is, right? Um, you take your $1,900, you divide that by two, because we're not talking about 24 karat, we're talking about 12 karat. That would make it $950. But then you take your $950 divided by 20, because it's 1 20th of 12 karat. That means 1 20th of 12 karat would be worth $47.50 an ounce. This is not an ounce, it's actually probably less than a gram. So that would convert down to $1.52 a gram of 1 20th 12 carat if an ounce of gold was $1,900. And I guarantee you that if you took both of these very thin scales off of this and weighed them together, it would probably weigh less than a gram. So there's probably less than $1 in pure gold in this knife. But it's still cool. <laughs> it's still cool and it's still old and I, I love the history and story behind it. Now the reason I grabbed these two knives out here is just to give an example of what looks like an old knife that could be gold, right? Now if you look at the bail here, I know you guys can't see it close, but there's no markings at all. Uh, there's no markings on the scales either. Uh, all precious metals are marked, okay? So if you had a gold knife or there was silver in a knife, it would be marked somewhere on that knife, which I'll give you an example in a second here. But we take this blade open here. All right, there's actually two blades on this. I'm going to zoom in on it. You can see the markings on there. Colonial, Providence, Rhode Island, USA. So this looks like it could be real gold, but it's not. And there's no markings to indicate that it would be real gold. And again, all real gold would be marked unless it was custom made by someone. And just like the first one, you can see there's a bale here, so you can have a chain, so you can attach this you know, to your uh, vest or something like that. Very classy. This knife is actually the same knife, but newer. I happen to have this in my collection. I don't know where I got it. I don't remember, but it's the same thing. This is just what it's supposed to look like before it gets all beat up. Now this knife almost looks too good to be real gold, right? Whereas this one being older, a little dented here and there, this looks like maybe, maybe that's real gold, you know? But neither one of them are real gold. And even the one that's marked, as real gold, again, doing that math is such little gold that it's adding any value in precious metals. The value in this knife is its historical uh, piece. People would want this just because it's a little piece of knife history. Now, that's gold. Unfortunately, I don't have any other knives currently that have gold content. But these ones have silver content. So let's start with this one here, okay? Here's a uh, handsome little knife. I like the scroll work. One side has, looks like some grape vines. Some grapes growing on there. All right, the other side has um, the 12 tribes of Israel. And I only know that because I had to look it up. Um, so yeah, of course you can Google that and figure out what, what that means really, if you, if you don't know. Um, but uh, if you notice the markings on the bottom here. Now if I come in close here, all right, we could see 925. And then above 925, there's some kind of characters, right? Now if I go to the other side real quick, you can see 925, and above that it says sterling, okay, which is representing sterling silver. A lot of times older pieces won't even say sterling. They'll just be marked 925, which represents 92.5% pure silver. So being um, that these are the 12 tribes of Israel, I'm going to go out on a limb 
and say that probably says Sterling in Hebrew on top. Of course, someone watching this video can probably verify that. Now on the back, you can see it says Israel. And if I flip it over, again, I'm gonna to have to assume that says Israel in Hebrew. All right, very interesting piece, very beautiful. But in this particular case, the uh, blades are sterling steel. Let me open these up real quick. I'll show you that. Very sharp. Whoever had this before, definitely use the knife. All right, you can see this says Richards, Shetfield, England. And on the other side, it says stainless. Let me zoom in a little bit further. So I'm looking through the viewfinder to read this. Um, inoxidable, England. All right, so I looked up uh, Richards, Sheffield, and you can find uh, quite a few knives uh, from this particular company. And there's, you know, there's a lot of history in that if you happen to be interested and want to look yourself. Um, I want to say offhand, this, I looked this stuff up a couple weeks back, but I want to say that maybe it was a uh, German company that after the war came to England. Um, I think they changed their name slightly so they didn't look so German because, you know, right after World War II, Germans weren't very popular and so forth. But anyway, very cool knife, but this has sterling silver scales. They're just scales, okay? So they're a thin piece of sterling silver over top of, again, let me give you a close shot there. You can see inside that frame, see the separation there? They're actually stainless steel uh, liners, okay? And then these are just basically shells that go over top. All right, still beautiful though, still a very cool piece of history. This is the same in that this has sterling silver, um, you know, coverings, let's call them. They're almost like knife of veneers. You know, if the, uh, the knife was uh, some teeth, you'd have some beautiful veneers on there. All right, this one's very cool though. I like this. This was an eBay find I just particularly liked. But I like the little owl that's on the bottom. And you can see on the very bottom it does say sterling which again would represent 92.5% uh, pure silver. Then we have like a little castle here and some clouds and then some, looks like the moon and some stars. And on the other side, there's a woman's face here. Almost looks like a Morgan dollar or something. Some more stars. Just an interesting, interesting piece, nonetheless. This one's also... Very sharp, very worn down blades. That's how people used to sharpen their knives. They'd sharpen them until they didn't exist anymore. Now you can see the markings on this blade here. All right, this is actually a very well-known company. I didn't do any uh, particular research on this one yet since I've gotten it. Um, but I could probably find that somewhere in my uh, my books. I'll let that focus a second. Come back in. You can see it's the same marking as the other one. There we go. Yep. Okay, you guys get the point. Just pretty cool, but this is representing um, another uh, silver knife. All right, so in these two cases, we have silver um, shells on top. Now, moving on to this knife, you can see I do have a little magnet stuck to the back here, all right, just to give you a, a little demo. Um, this one has silver scales, as well as the tools are solid silver. All right, but the frame of the knife and the liners are in fact a stainless steel. All right, so this is a traditional fruit knife. Okay, now I talked about this being a fruit knife, which it was, this is a different style, uh, but this is the more common style, all right, where you're going to have a large blade and the blade is going to be in either coin silver, which is 90% plus silver, um, which in some cases they literally would melt down coins to create these knives. Uh, or it's going to be in sterling silver, all right? The reason for all the uh, silver is because there's a lot of acidity in different fruits, especially citrus, and you don't want different metals to react with that. You know, again, picture the Victorian age, women are wearing, you know, nice gloves, they wanna keep themselves very clean, especially if you're royalty or if you're well off. Uh, so having stainless steel and, you know, cutting into grapefruits and, you know, uh, lemons and things like that, uh, you're probably going to get some kind of reaction from those metals. It can make your gloves dirty. It can make the uh, fruit taste a little bit weird. So they avoid all that by using silver, which is actually really, really smart. So let me zoom in on this blade. You can see this does have engravings. Oftentimes these will have people's initials or names or there'll be gifts to people. This one says from 
ADW and the reverse which is very cool happens to have the date 1865 all right very very neat so it's amazing how old this uh, little piece of cutlery is here and we close our blade and this one has a um, a seed pick in it and again these will vary in their designs but these will also be in silver all right but this one here where the handle kind of looks like a generic butter knife or something which we see today um, very very common for these knives you can see all three of these um, antique uh, fruit knives have that very similar mo motif where it's almost you know like bowling pin shaped I guess you'd say but there's a little little bulge in the middle it's just very elegant supposed to be comfortable and these are obviously all very ornate as well lots of engravings things like that now these two are my favorite and these are the two that I'm going to focus on in the future I'm not heavily focused on it but I'd like to build a collection of just these knives where these are 100% silver all right well not 999 silver but they're solid sterling the hardware is uh, silver, the liners are silver, the blade's silver, the handles are silver. All right, you can see nothing is magnetic here. Everything has a nice patina on it. All right, just two different examples of the same knife. Now, the one on the left here, you can see is thinner because this one just has the blade. And this has an awesome, awesome back spring. You can even, you can hear this when it's closing, half stop. And when it opens, really, really cool. You see again the engraving on that blade, very common design. You can see it's like a peach or something with some flowers around it. Nothing on the other side, side excuse me. All right. Except for a really nice patina. And the other one is the same. This one has beautiful uh, toning on it. Just like an old coin. This one does have a branding that's on the blade. You can see right there. There's a little anchor. It says W.M. Rogers and Son, AA. All right, same design on the blade. Back this out a little bit. Really, just really nice toning. Really beautiful. Just like looking at an old coin. And this one has a very nice um, seed pick. So yeah, that is uh, pretty much it. Um, I think all old knives are very cool. I like uh, antique knives. I think they're you know fascinating um, But these specifically like I like this one as well. It's definitely part of this little collection um, But these these antique fruit knives are just super super cool I really am very fascinated by it. You guys know I'm obsessed with precious metals. It's a cool piece of knife history um, They're beautiful looking knives and you know throwing the fact they're made out of silver you got my attention. So that's what I'm kind of focused on in the future as far as like antique knives go. You guys know I have specific knife collections here and there for different reasons. Uh, it's not something I'm gonna, you know, stay on eBay for, you know, 20 hours a week looking for these things. They could be anywhere. If you get lucky, maybe you get one for 30 bucks, 50 bucks, something like that. Generally, they're going for about 100, sometimes over 100 if there's specific branding, specific markings. Um, you know, they range quite a bit. It really just depends on who's looking for them and how much they're willing to pay. But they're still somewhat reasonable. So, like, it's, it's such a historic, wonderful piece to have in a collection for, let's say, 100 bucks in and around $100. You know, whereas I know a lot of guys have just dozens and dozens and dozens of $100 tactical folders, and they're all pretty much the same. I mean, they're cool. They're great knives. They work well. But if you're talking about the collectible aspect of things, there's just no stories there. They're just bland. This has an amazing story. And they're beautiful. Just really, really beautiful pieces. Now, something that I know someone's going to mention is how does a silver blade cut? Um, well, not that well. You can't sharpen silver as well as you can sharpen a lot of wonderful carbon steels and stainless steels and, and things like that. But remember, this is a fruit knife. You have to pierce, you know, uh, a piece of fruit. So you could take even a butter knife and easily cut open an orange or something uh, of that nature. So it doesn't have to be uh, super sharp. It does come to a thin edge, which is all you need to pierce into that fruit. So, I mean, that, that's again, its purpose and the reason behind it being silver was it doesn't have a reaction with the acidity in a lot of different fruits. All right. So it totally made sense at the time. It, they're just super, super cool. I love them. Um, the problem with collecting things like this is you really are pretty much stuck on eBay 
you're not going to easily find these at garage sales and, and you know thrift shops and maybe antique shops I, maybe that's a place you can certainly look for these but I can almost guarantee you're going to pay more at an antique shop for something like this than you would maybe finding it on eBay so I can't imagine there's that many people collecting them but who knows you know and trends definitely uh, change up and maybe they're more expensive this year and then next year they're super cheap and then the year after that they're four times the price who knows um, but I wanted to talk about this a little bit I definitely wanted to show these knives since I already teased you in that uh, trade video saying I was going to talk about them but I wanted to focus on knives again that have real gold and real silver in them I think it's super cool um, but there's you know so many different varieties of them I just wish they made modern knives modern folding knives with some precious metals you know maybe not a solid gold handle uh, that won't have as much market as a solid silver handle um, you know but like I said I mean like let's say even a buck knife I would love I would absolutely love if buck made like a 110 or 112 or something you know but with you know sterling silver bolsters solid sterling silver or even 999 fine it would just be cool I would love it you know maybe throw on like an S30V you know uh, Tony Bowes blade solid 999 bolsters a really fine wood handle I'd buy that knife I don't care if that knife costs 200 bucks 300 bucks I'd probably buy the knife because I want some silver in my pocket on my knives because I just love silver that much I think it's super cool um, but again, I mean, there's a couple ways to look at these. It's fascinating because there's precious metals. It's fascinating because they're so old. It's fascinating because it was a certain period of our, um, our history, you know, where people were using these very specific knives for a specific purpose. I mean, I don't know, uh, you know, if they were using their fruit knives to cut open their, their letters, if it was a general purpose EDC knife, so to speak, or was it literally just for fruit? And if they weren't eating fruit, they'd use something else to cut other stuff. I don't really know. I'm not that old. <laughs> if you happen to know or have some more information on that, I'd love to hear it. Uh, I feel like letter openers were probably a thing back then, but who knows? Maybe, maybe they use their fruit knives to open their mail. I couldn't tell you. But what I can tell you is these are super cool, and overall, I think all these are pretty neat. So that's all. Let me know down in the comment section if now that you watch this video, you're going to hop on eBay and try to buy yourself a fruit knife. If you are, you're my competition, but that's okay. I'm not in the market for a while. This is just something that I'd be putting on the back burner once in a blue moon, pop on eBay. I have a couple things I always look for here and there, and this would be one of them. If I happen to see one for a deal or something, I'd certainly try to bid on it and pick it up as cheap as possible to add to my collection. I just think they're so rich in history. It's really cool. Like I said, I mean, you can show me the latest and greatest, you know, $700 tactical frame lock with the best steel ever and it's cool trust me it is awesome and i will fondle it but i will be just as impressed if you picked up one of these out of your collection and handed it to me i would say oh cool that's one of those antique fruit knives you know i just like things that are different this is something you don't see every day you know talked about in the knife community uh when i first got into the knife community i was like 12 years old i hopped on knife forums back in the day and blade forums and stuff and back then it was just a lot of older dudes and those old dudes they had old knives and they talk about stuff like this you know you just don't see it as much especially you know on youtube specifically um but they'd be showing knives from the 70s and you know knives from their fathers and grandfathers from you know like 1905 or 1880 things like that and it's just you don't see as much of the antique and old stuff these days there's plenty of people i'm sure there's thousands and thousands of guys and gals that still collect and love these things but again, it's just not, at least I haven't seen it super represented on YouTube, you know, so I wanted to make a, a video talking about it a little bit. I just find it fascinating. I love everything with an edge, even if it's a silver edge, it's not all that sharp. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.